did you pick your dress, sweetie? Um, well, I sort of looked around the store and I saw what I liked, so oh, I got yeah? it, yeah. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 moments that made us love Dakota Johnson. What is it about elevators? For this list, we'll be looking at moments from films, interviews, and other appearances that made this actress one of the most talked about stars of her generation. Keep in mind that there are a couple of spoilers. What's your favorite Dakota Johnson moment? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, introducing Sean Parker to the Facebook, the social network. So what do you do? I'm an entrepreneur. Although not her feature debut, the social network shined the spotlight on Johnson as she emerged as an actress to watch. She might not be on screen for long, but anyone who can steal attention from Justin Timberlake is bound to leave a strong impression. Johnson plays Amelia Amy Ritter, a Stanford student who sleeps on top of Napster creator Sean Parker, played by Timberlake. I founded Napster. Sean Parker founded Napster. Nice to meet you. You're Sean Parker? In just over three minutes, Johnson establishes Amelia as a witty and intelligent young woman who plays an essential role in telling Parker about this addicting new internet phenomenon. Yeah, after you passed out last night, I went on the Facebook for a little bit. What's that? The Facebook? Stanford's had it for like two weeks now. It's really awesome, except it's freakishly addictive. In reality, Parker learned about the Facebook after spotting the site on his roommate's girlfriend's computer. While the situation is altered here, the girlfriend did go to Stanford like Amelia. Number nine, wanting Jamie Dornan to show more skin. Watch what happens live with Andy Cohen. Anastasia Steele remains the steamiest role of Johnson's career, hence why her parents have reservations about watching the Fifty Shades trilogy. I want to know, are your parents ever going to just bite the bullet and see Fifty Shades? Um, you know, I don't think so. <laughs> really? You don't think so? They won't do it? Well, why would they want to right. see that? Although Johnson has described taking her clothes off on set as difficult, she's, quote, not afraid of nudity, adding, quote, I think women are beautiful. While male co-star Jamie Dornan also stripped down for his role, even Johnson wishes that the audience got to see more of Mr. Grey. Dakota, do you think it's fair that we saw way less of Jamie Dornan's body in Fifty Shades than we saw of yours? Mmm, that's an interesting question. Yeah. I'll probably get in trouble for this answer. When asked about it in an interview, Johnson vowed to get Dornan fully naked in Fifty Shades Darker. Yeah, I'm gonna make him get fully naked in the next one. This didn't entirely pan out, as Dornan never went the full Monty, although footage was reportedly shot. Nevertheless, Johnson's humorous and down-to-earth responses to these uncomfortable questions further solidified her as a true professional. Number eight. Her missing tooth gap. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. There's some headlines about you last couple of days. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's really stressing me out. Being the star of Fifty Shades, Johnson's appearance has been the subject of various conversations. In 2019, the internet became fixated on one particular facet, Johnson's missing tooth gap. The gap had been a staple of Johnson's smile for years, and then suddenly it mysteriously vanished. Well, first of all, the fact that this is a newsworthy event in <laughs> in our in our world right now is pretty shaka con to me. <laughs> Johnson cleared up the um controversy on the Tonight Show, revealing that the gap closed after her permanent retainer was removed. My orthodontist, she decided that it would be a good idea to take it off and see if my jaw sort of expanded and it helped me and my gap closed by itself and I'm really sad about it too. Who knew that teeth could cause neck pain? Johnson shared in our mutual heartbreak over the lost gap, although it could still come back. For now, Johnson cheered us all up by tapping Jimmy Fallon's tooth and sharing a story about using George Clooney's name to land reservations at restaurants. You used to call up and say, you have a ta table for George Clooney. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because I wanted to go to the good restaurants in a, in, when I was growing up. Do when you I was know George school. Clooney? No, I don't. George was apparently cool with this. Number seven, her opening monologue, Saturday Night Live. Thank you, it is such an honor to be here hosting Saturday Night Live. Johnson hosted SNL for the first time not long after Fifty Shades of Grey premiered. While Johnson promoted her blockbuster film, she also poked fun at its lack of Oscar potential. But this movie is a ton of fun and I'm really proud of it and I don't wanna to speak too soon, but 
I have a funny feeling that at next year's Oscars, it's going to be not anywhere. Johnson was actually wrong about that, as the film did earn a Best Original Song nomination for Earned It. The important thing to Johnson is that the film has its fans, some of which were in the audience. I wanted to ask if you'd sign my wife's ball gag, honey. <laughs> Your movie has brought us a lot closer, even the kids have noticed. This wasn't Johnson's first time on the SNL set. Aside from making a cameo at the 40th anniversary, her parents supposedly conceived her around the same time Melanie Griffith hosted SNL in 1988. While they still won't watch Fifty Shades, Griffith and Don Johnson did show up to see their daughter crush her opening monologue. Isn't that right, you guys? <laughs> Number six, Eleanor meets Tyler, the peanut butter falcon. Ma'am? Ma'am? Gentlemen. In this underrated indie gem, Johnson plays Eleanor, a caretaker who loses track of a young man with Down syndrome named Zach. As Zach ventures to become a professional wrestler, Eleanor sets out to find him. Although Eleanor could have been played as a no-nonsense stick in the mud, Johnson brings humor, pluck, and relatability to the role. In this scene, Eleanor runs into Zack's unlikely traveling companion, Tyler. While Eleanor is out of her element, she still holds her own against the sloppy Tyler. So you got some kind of reward? No. What are you, you bounty hunter? Would I be a bounty hunter if I just said there's no bounty? When Eleanor asks Tyler about Zack, the two start interrogating each other with playful banter interspersed. Eleanor doesn't get Zack's location, but Tyler does get her name. Yeah, you got a name? Yeah, I got a name. What is it? Eleanor. Eleanor. Eleanor also gives him an obscene hand gesture, showing that she's not just a proper city girl. Number five, a difficult decision, Black Mass. I want to take my boy home. He's not coming home. Johnson's screen time is limited in this mostly male ensemble piece. During one integral scene, though, Johnson delivers the film's most devastating performance. Johnson stars as Lindsay Sear, the mother of Whitey Bulger's son Douglas. Succumbing to Ray syndrome, young Douglas ends up on life support without the possibility of recovering. He's brain dead. He's on life support. He can't move. And I don't want him like that. I can't have my little boy be like that. Although it breaks Lindsay's heart, she knows that there's only one way to end the suffering, which Whitey refuses to accept. Although Whitey is a threatening criminal, Lindsay isn't intimidated. After spending years on the sidelines as the supportive mother and girlfriend, Lindsay takes control. I'll pull the plug myself. I will. She stands her ground, telling Whitey off before leaving to grieve in solitude. Johnson couldn't be more heartbreaking as a mother forced to live through every parent's worst nightmare. Number four, Nina confronts Lita, the lost daughter. It's lovely here. Yeah. So, do you want the keys? <laughs> if it's all right with you. Speaking of grieving mothers, Olivia Coleman leads this psychological drama as Lita, who tries filling the void in her life by stealing a little girl's doll. She also befriends the girl's mother, Nina, played by Johnson. Their relationship culminates with Lita returning the doll to Nina, who's thrilled and relieved at first. Where did you find her? No, I took her. Why? When Lita reveals that she took the doll and has been playing with it this whole time though, Nina's perception of her is turned upside down. Although the two mothers actually have a fair deal in common, Nina can't comprehend why Lita would do something so unnatural. We're not surprised that Nina storms off in anger, but we weren't prepared for her to stab Lena with the hat pin she bought her. Lena, I'm so sorry. I don't want anything You're from so me. young and it doesn't pass. Number three, happy birthday indeed, The Ellen DeGeneres Show. But I didn't even know you wanted to be invited. Well, who didn't I didn't want to be invited to a party? Well, I didn't even know you liked me. <laughs> Usually when a celebrity goes on a talk show, they enter the host's domain. As such, Ellen DeGeneres seemingly held all the cards when she accused Johnson of not inviting her to her 30th birthday. Firing back with a smile, Johnson asserted that DeGeneres was invited and didn't show up. How was the party? I wasn't invited. <laughs> Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. Although Ellen initially claimed to have no recollection of this, it wasn't long until she remembered getting an invite. The internet went crazy for the image of Johnson smirking while DeGeneres was caught in the headlights. Johnson wasn't done being flawlessly frank as she revealed that her favorite comedian, Tignataro, showed up and performed. 
Johnson delivers a perfect mic drop by getting up and waving goodbye, although she of course sits back down. Bye. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> Number two, Emily shoots Dwight. Bad times at the El Royale. What do you want? Oh, well, ma'am, the, the, the storm's just wrecking all kinds of hell on the hotel. People are having complaints about losing power and such. So the boy up front had asked me to come around, check on some of the women, make sure they're safe. I'm fine. Every guest who checks into the El Royale has a mysterious past. Emily Summerspring, played by Johnson, is no exception, showing up with a hostage. The young woman tied up in her room is eventually revealed to be Rose, Emily's sister, who's been running with the wrong crowd. Special Agent Dwight Broadbeck doesn't realize this, attempting to stage a rescue. <laughs> Although he gets the drop on her, Dwight underestimates Emily, who came prepared with a shotgun and isn't afraid to use it. Rosie? Get out of the way. Dwight's sudden demise is only the second craziest part of this scene, as the blast exposes Miles behind the mirror. Johnson beams with confidence in the role, and this scene finds Emily at her most resilient. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Eyeing Channing Tatum, 21 Jump Street. Every time we re-watch this comedy, we almost don't recognize Johnson. You hear that? That's you. Don't do it, man. Why you keep that dirty in your pants. Penelope Lanier, a bigger splash. Johnson's most seductive role. Do you want some? No, I don't smoke. Doesn't mean you don't want some. Yes, it does. You must have been really desperate to crash your car like that. Drinking Tequila, the late show with Stephen Colbert. So what if she had to go to Canada after? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Meeting Audrey, the five-year engagement. An awkward introduction made even more awkward. How's it going today? Good, how are you? Okay, I'm great. Yeah, it's nice to have you aboard. Thank you. Yeah, you'll make a great part of the team. He's engaged. Her response to her wardrobe malfunction, 42nd People's Choice Awards. The award was for drama, but Johnson needs to do more comedy. Leslie just broke my dress. <laughs> okay, so, well, it's not like nobody here hasn't already seen my boobs. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Susie's First Dance – Suspiria Johnson didn't have much dance experience prior to landing the role of Susie in this unnerving film. She spent nearly a year training for the part, however. All of that studying and sweat shines through whenever Johnson steps onto the dance floor. With her first dance scene, Susie establishes herself as a force to be reckoned with. Amplified by Tom York's haunting score, Susie's dancing isn't just intense. It's so hypnotic that it draws in Tilda Swinton's artistic director from the other room. It's one of the film's many triumphs of editing, choreography, and sound design, with Johnson at the core. Johnson has never been more commanding on screen, setting the stage for a mesmerizing performance you cannot look away from. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.